be the lamp unto your feet in the name and by the blood of Jesus. Orika Ravala Sikaba, you are a candle, my daughter. You are a candle. Orika Ravala Kurava, you will never go dim. You will never go dim. Orika Ravala Kurava, you will be. You will bring life to many people. You will bring life to many people. You will bring light, light into their lives in the name and by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus.
quickly go to Luke's Gospel chapter 4 and verse 16 back to Luke chapter 4 and verse 16 Luke 4 16 he was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom he stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him Jesus was in the synagogue why this training? Why these equipping sessions? Why we receiving what we are receiving? Why are we putting in a lot of effort into all this, whatever we've been doing? Why? Because it is very, very important. As Jesus did what he did, we also are called what to do what he did. Why? It's so important that we are present in the vicinity of the presence of God. These equipping training sessions are times when we need to be present when these sessions happen. We need to be present to be able to receive. And when Jesus was present there, what happens? What happened? He was there in the synagogue as his custom and he stood up to read and the, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And, uh, and Jesus taught that in verse 15, you read that. Can somebody read verse 15 out loud? He taught in the synagogues and everyone praised him. When the teaching of the word of God is given in the house of God, we need to be there to receive it. Why this? So that we will learn. So that we will receive. That's why these sessions of training and equipping on the spiritual gifts. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why God has brought you here inside this place, into this fellowship. That's why God has brought you here. The Bible says in, in Jeremiah 3.16 that I will sh give you shepherds after my own heart, the Bible says. God has given you shepherds here according to his heart. It's a grace of God upon your life that God has brought you here. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Praise God. Hallelujah. There is a place that God has appointed for every person to be in. And Jesus was in the synagogue as usual. So it's important when he was there, many, many times you find that as usual when he was there, he was able to minister to people there. And the people were also there to be able to receive the ministry of Jesus in the, in the house of God, in the synagogue. There was a man whose hand was shriveled up and the Pharisees were complaining with Jesus and questioning about the Sabbath day. And Jesus saw them and to prove a point to them, heal that man with a shriveled hand. He was, he was dealing with the Pharisees by healing the shriveled man. Amen. Jesus didn't come there that day just to heal the shriveled man. He came as usual and he was there to minister. But the power of God was there and the man who with a shriveled hand was present to be able to receive. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so important that you and I are present in the atmosphere of the presence of God, in the vicinity of the presence of God, in the power of God to be able to receive what God has in store for you. If you miss one day or one meeting, you could miss something for a whole lifetime. Amen. 
that's how that's how amazing it is because every meeting is different every prayer time is different every worship service is different what you receive what you learn what is being taught what jesus teaches what the holy spirit teaches us is different each time and so it's so important he was teaching and everybody praised him he was right there in the house of god be present in the pre- in the pr- in the vicinity of the presence of god to be able to receive it to receive it hallelujah amen how many of us want to take that take that decision today that every sunday morning and evening and every prayer time i want to be present in the presence of the lord how many of us want to take that decision amen if you really you know care about receiving you lift your hand and and tell the lord Lord I want to be present every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening and every prayer time I want to receive from you every time you come into your house to teach hallelujah amen praise god if you pray that sincere prayer if you have that sincere desire you will certainly receive hallelujah the word of prophecy was fulfilled there the the passage from isaiah was given to him he takes it out and he reads the scroll from isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 to 4 and when he reads it and he finished reading it and he gave the scroll back verse 20 to 22 Let's read verse um, 20 to 22 and rolling it he found the place where it is written um, then he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant and sat down the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him he began by saying to them today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing you when you are present in the house of god when the spirit of god is working mighty things and teaching and equipping us and training us and we are learning every sunday after sunday and every prayer time we are learning and receiving when that happens when when you are present what happens is this you will see the fulfillment of the work and the word of god hallelujah that's what you will begin to see what did they see their eyes were fixed fastened on him and the bible says today jesus says today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing you will see and witness and experience the fulfillment of the work and the word of god what jesus spoke the word was fulfilled and jesus's works were written there what jesus would do the spirit of the lord is sovereign lord is anointed me to preach the good news to the poor to blind the, to open the blind eyes to set the captives free isaiah 61 that is fulfilled that day the work and the word of god is fulfilled when they were in the house of god hallelujah for you and i if you need to witness what you're witnessing now what you're witnessing today you need to be present every sunday morning every sunday evening and 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 last few sundays we've started learning uh on the uh, on the gospels and and the learning the gospels from the jewish perspective and because the scripture was written in a hebrew culture and we've been learning on and what happened and what jesus said and and why the miracles were done and and what is the reason why jesus spoke what he spoke we're learning i'm learning as i'm teaching i'm also learning i'm looking at these scripture verses i'm learning more hallelujah and so it's for us to learn so that we understand and know the word of god better and if you and i need to operate in the gifts of the spirit of god we really need to know the word of god jesus knew the word of god while he was 12 Every Jewish boy has to memorize the Old Testament Torah the first five books of the Bible by the age when they are 12 memorize Can you imagine that So if we need to learn the word that's when we will be able to minister to other people you cannot give what you don't have If you need to give if you need to be a giver if you need to be a blessing you need to first be receiving and that's why we meet Sunday after Sunday why to receive and of course as well as to give as the spirit of god will lead us so it's very important that we take it very very seriously you know i wonder how that it is possible to have a simple cold and say i can't go to church because i have cold i'm just so you know it just i'm not able to understand this yes everybody goes through sickness and weakness and and physical uh, you know times of difficulty in, in the body but 
if you are sick you actually need to be coming into the presence of god into the house of god here somebody will lay hands on you and you will be healed hallelujah don't ever stay at home unless if you are totally immobile you cannot even walk you cannot you can't even get up unless if you almost like you know you have an injury or something that you cannot even move don't stay at home come to the house of god you will be healed hallelujah because the power of the lord is present here to heal you hallelujah praise god and when somebody is filled with the holy spirit and moves in the spirit of god and led by the holy spirit lay hands and and praise over you or while you just walk in through this door and the presence of god is here you will be healed hallelujah amen come with faith don't say i'm sick and stay at home that won't heal you amen you come sick to the presence of god god will heal you hallelujah praise god amen and avoid every kind of obligation oh somebody is coming somebody is going you know somebody needs to be dropped in the airport in the you know railway station and this and that all those kinds of things stop all of them tell people who are visiting you we can't drop you on sunday evening at 7 o'clock we have a service 6 to 8 you book a train which is at 10 o'clock and we'll drop you at 9 you got to have the guts to say that amen for many many decades now nobody none of our relatives visit us on a sunday they don't because they know that we are not available for them not after we started the ministry while we believers part of other churches you get what i'm saying that's why we were able to receive right from when i was 3 years old i remember sitting in church sunday morning sunday evening not once in the last 30 years have i ever missed a sunday morning or a evening service all glory to god or a first morning morning devotion in the last 30 years and and i know for my parents it is it goes more than 60 years from 1950 yes even when they were in a csi church morning and evening they would be in church that's why god is able to use us the way he uses us hallelujah to touch lives if you are not sincere if you are not committed that's why i said it's sacrifice it's, it don't come easy it doesn't come overnight hallelujah God graciously gives us his gifts but it's so important that you are faithful faithful sincere diligent to to protect it to be able to be used by God to be a good learner to be a good disciple to be a growing you know uh disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ amen hallelujah it says Jesus went to the synagogue as was his custom and and and, and never come late for a service never come late unless if it's a working day and we have a meeting on a working day and you're rushing back from work and you get delayed because of your work that's understandable but don't say servant maid will come and you know i need to be cooking and it takes time and so i need to be late please for heaven's sake never do that what will, what would you do if jesus comes and if the trumpet sounds at that time would you say jesus please wait let me finish the cooking and then i'll come the servant maid will come please jesus wait hold on let the maid go home and then i'll come that's how it feels that's how it looks like oh that shouldn't be the case for a for a believer for a child of god who is going to be involved in serving god if you are a person who is going to be involved in serving god you need to put down certain disciplines and be a good example You need to be a good example. You can't be operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and live a totally indisciplined life on the other side. Am I Am I clear to you? We can't we cannot be indisciplined. We cannot be coming late and we can't be showing up to church once in a while and imagine that the gifts of the Spirit will operate and God will use us. That won't that won't happen for too long. The gifts will not operate for too long. it's important that we are disciplined that we are committed that we are faithful that we are that we are on time these are things that we really need to change these are things that has to be changed it cannot go on like this all the time some people are 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 perennially late late every week late for years together don't be late all the time you might get become late lamented go google it if you need to know what it is they 
Now, you need to understand that Jesus, Jesus was in the synagogue and while they were, Jesus was in the synagogue, the disciples were there, the people of God were there and they were hearing the word of God and the word of God and the work of God was fulfilled at their hearing. Because they were present there, they were able to see that. So, when we are present in the house of God, what happens? We will begin to witness. We will be able to see. We will be able to hear what we don't see, what we don't hear. Hallelujah. What we otherwise would not see, otherwise wouldn't hear. We will see the manifestation of the work of God. We will hear the word of God. There will be mind, mighty expressions of the manifestation of the spirit of God when we are here together. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important that we are in the house of God. And secondly, why these times where we are here? Uh, look at, um, if you go to the you know, incident of the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus um, transfigured before them, it's amazing. You will see how uh, Jesus took Peter, James and John, the inner circle along with him, and uh, he took them along uh, to the Mount of Transfiguration the other disciples were there and they were left behind and Jesus took these three along with them to the Mount of Transfiguration and they go up there and you know what happens when Jesus takes them there to the Mount of Transfiguration, they see Jesus enveloped in a cloud and his face begins to shine like the sun and uh, his, there is a bright, brilliant radiance that, that comes out of him. Uh, let me just get the verse for you. And when, when that happens, Matthew 17, yes. You see that there is a bright cloud, verse 5, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Jesus takes Peter, James and John and he transfigured before them, verse 2. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became white as the light. Just then there appeared before, the, before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said, Lord Jesus, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. You know, Jesus took Peter, James and John to get to the real spiritual experiences and a real encounter with God. You really need to get away from the people you need to get away from. Peter, James and John got away from all the other people and Jesus just took them higher. If you need to go up higher, you need to get away from those people who keep you down. There are some people who talk things to you, say things to you and, and, and have conversations with which will drain you, which will, which will be negative conversations, negative thoughts, negative ideas. There will, there will be sinful people who will be around you, who will be influencing you and you will have to be having conversations of their kind. But you need to get away, separate yourself to be able to go up higher spiritually. If you need to be operating in the gifts of the Spirit, you really need to get away from the people you need to get away from. And, and be among the people whom you need to be with. You need to be among the people with whom you need to be with. Jesus took Peter, James and John and they were together all alone on the mount. Amen. If Jesus did not want to transfigure and show himself where everybody was there, where people would not understand what he was doing. Jesus wanted to reveal this to the three of them and he took them away. You need to get away. This is a place where you get away. Hallelujah. This is a place where you get away from other people. You stop hearing other voices. You need to get away to be able to go up higher. We need to come together more and more to be able to go up higher. Hallelujah. How many of you say, I need more than this? Hallelujah. Our thirst and our hunger should never grow cold. Hallelujah. We could never say in the kingdom of God that this is enough. This is okay. That's all. You know, it's done. There is no limit for God. Hallelujah. Our God is a limitless God and he will take us higher and higher and higher and to a better place and to, to higher experiences, to greater experiences. And you will do things which are greater than these, Jesus said. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so he takes them to a high place. You need to move up higher. You need to be among the right kind of people. And then while we're still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped 
you know peter immediately he is a spokesperson for the group and he is always speaking up you know quickly and he says lord it's good for us to be here let's put up three shelters oh let's settle down here itself no 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 jesus said no 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 we are not going to be here that's not why i brought you here i brought you here so that you might see what you've not seen so that you will hear what you've not heard hallelujah and immediately when after peter spoke there was a voice from heaven that said listen to him this is my son whom i love with him i'm well pleased listen to him hallelujah we come here we gather together we move up higher to be able to listen to him not for us to speak not for us to have our own agenda we are not here to fulfill what we want to fulfill we are not here on you know what we want to build peter wanted to build three shelters we are not building our own kingdoms we are not building what we want to build we we're not doing what we want to do we want to come and be quiet here in god's presence to be able to listen to hear his voice and see his glorious face peter james and john saw jesus in all of his glory and there you have him you know uh, uh, there you have them hearing god's voice hallelujah in other words god just told peter peter you don't know what is happening here please shut up You don't know what I'm trying to do. You don't know what I'm trying to show you. Please be quiet. Listen to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop your agenda. Stop your plans. Don't build what you want to build. Stop what you're doing. Come. I've brought you here. Listen to my voice. Hallelujah. That's how we are here. Hallelujah. That's why we are here to go up higher. Everybody say higher. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to go up higher. Do you desire that? Amen. Praise God. Peter, James and John, they went up higher and truly they had a high spiritual experience. Amen. And you find later on Peter standing up with the 11 and preaching the gospel and 3000 people being saved. Hallelujah. Amen. He really moved up higher. Praise God. He had ups and downs in his life. God is not looking for perfect people. God is looking for people who are available who want to go up higher. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You may not be perfect. You may have problems. You may have difficulties. You may have weaknesses. You may have struggles in your own life. But God is looking for people who are willing to go with Jesus to go up higher. Who are willing to come to the house of God and willing to receive. Who are willing to shed their agenda and their plans and say, God, what do you want me to do? I'm ready. Hallelujah. God will take and use you. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Peter made a mistake right there in the Mount of Transfiguration. He said what he shouldn't say, but yet God used him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We might have our own ideas, we might think of our own plans, but God will use us and do things in our lives. You listen to him. Go up higher. Come together in God's presence and you will go up higher constantly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And what happens when we go up higher? What happens when we are together? What happens when we come together, pray together, seek the Lord together? What happens? Once you are here and you have a heart of a learner, you want to learn, you have a heart of a disciple. And once you, you know, you will become a spiritual leader. You will become an influencer. You will be serving God. You will lead yourself and lead others to spiritual victory. Hallelujah. You know what will happen? You will lead yourself and others to spiritual victory. How many of us want to see that happen in our lives? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are many many people we find who do, who cannot even lead themselves. They themselves do not know what to do. And that's why that's what Jehoshaphat, you know, experience is read that in 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 14. Uh yes. I'm sorry I think it's in verse 12. Let's go to 2nd Chronicles chapter 20. Chapter 20. Verse number 12. Our God, will you I mean this is a prayer. You know three kings are coming against him and he's praying, he's called for a prayer. Uh he's called the whole nation everybody is there you see who are all there who are all there everybody is there verse 13 all the men of judah 
with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. Everybody is important. Everybody is needed for the kingdom of God. Everybody has to stand in the presence of God. From the youngest to the oldest. Hallelujah. Amen. Victory is for the youngest to the oldest. Hallelujah. What God wants to do is for the youngest to the oldest. What God wants to speak is for the youngest to the oldest. Hallelujah. And you see everybody is there in the presence of God. What is Jehoshaphat saying? Our God will you not judge them. Verse 12. For we have no power to face this vast army which is attacking us. We do not know what to do but our eyes are upon you. Hallelujah. We don't know what to do, how to go about doing what we need to be doing. But our eyes are upon you. That's what we do. You see we read right there back in Luke's gospel. You know their eyes were. Their eyes were fastened on him our eyes should be upon jesus hallelujah that's the focus that's whom we're looking for that's we whom we're looking at but when they all came together and prayed together see what happened in verse 14 the spirit of the lord came hallelujah amen when they're all together and they don't know what to do and they're all praying to the Lord and Jehoshaphat is leading this prayer and everybody, the children, the wives, the, even the infants, everybody were there and they all got together and they were praying what happens, the spirit of the Lord comes upon them. Hallelujah. And the spirit of the Lord came upon them and uh, um, on Jehaziel, Jehaziel then begins to prophesy in verse 15 onwards. We don't have time to read the whole prophecy. But look at what now Jehoshaphat, see what Jehoshaphat says there. Early in the morning, verse 20, they left for the desert of Echoa. Now they're facing a vast army, an enemy, great enemy. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Hallelujah. It says in verse 12, we do not know. Who said that? Who said that? Jehoshaphat says, we do not know what to do. But he called everybody together and they prayed together. But what is he? And then what happens in verse 20? He says, listen to me. Hallelujah. Now he knows what to do. Between verse 12 and 20. But what made the difference? What made what has caused him to, to be able to say, listen to me, I know what we're going to do. What is the difference? First he says, I don't know what to do. Now he says, I know what to do. Listen to me. If you don't know what you're going to say, how can you say, listen to me? Right? So he knows what he's going to say. So he says, listen to me. He has a plan. He's clear now. And he says, oh, and the difference between I don't know what to do we do not know what to do and now we know what to do. The difference, what made the difference in between is the spirit of the Lord that came upon a man and a prophetic word that came out. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to shout a louder hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon you and the word of God comes through somebody, we will know what to do. Hallelujah. The difference between not knowing what to do and knowing what to do is just a prophetic word which we need. For which we need to come together to be able to receive. Hallelujah. We need to be able to be in the atmosphere of prayer and the presence of God. And there the Spirit of God will come and He will speak through someone. He will speak through many people like this morning. And we will know what to do. And what does he say? He speaks with confidence here. He says in verse 20, latter part, Have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. There are three things here I want to show you in this few verses that he speaks. Three things here that happen. You know, what are the three things? You see him speaking boldly. In other, in, in other words, with confidence. He speaks with confidence. He is not weak. He is not afraid. He is not wondering what is going to happen. He speaks, he speaks with certainty. He speaks with clarity. He speaks with accuracy. He speaks with certainty, clarity and accuracy. Hallelujah. Absolutely certain of what he is going to do. He speaks with clarity. He is very clear. He knows what he is going to do. He's very clear of what God is going to do and he speaks with confidence. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, he speaks with confidence. 
He's speaking so boldly because there was a prophetic word in between. One word from God is enough for us. He speaks with accuracy. Accurately. We will be successful. And he knows what to do. He sends his singers first. Then he sends the army. And while they're just going out and singing, God sends ambushes and they're all destroyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very clear. Very certain. Accurate. Hallelujah. That's always a sign of a clear prophetic word. Prophetic words will not be vague. If you don't understand the word at all, we need to check if that's really from God. Amen. Prophetic words will be very clear, very certain and accurate. Hallelujah. Praise God. It will give you a direction. It will give you hope. It will give you uh, 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 confidence. It will give you, it will increase your faith. It will it'll draw you closer to God. The greatest sign of a accurate uh, of, a, of, a, of a right prophecy or a right operation of the gift of the Spirit, the greatest sign of a, of, a, of, a, of a gift operating, that this is a true gift, the greatest sign is not in its manifestation or the way it is manifested. It is in the way it draws the person to God. Hallelujah. It is not even in its fulfillment or in its accuracy, above and beyond all of that, it is in the way it draws a person to God. Hallelujah. The gift will always draw the person to the giver of the gift. The giver is greater than the gift. Hallelujah. The gift is never greater than the giver. Amen? Are you with me this morning? So it will always draw us. See what Jehoshaphat, after he heard the prophetic word, see what he's saying. He says, have faith in God. Have faith in the servants, his prophets, and you will be successful. Hallelujah. He didn't magnify the success. He didn't magnify the gift. He didn't magnify the prophetic word, but he said faith in God. His focus turned towards God. And he was turning the people's focus towards God. Hallelujah. Amen. Those are things we need to be very careful that we never take the glory upon ourselves. You might have ministered most powerfully that, to that person and that person's life might have been transformed and that person might go up and testify all over the world mentioning your name but you always turn the glory over to God and tell that person to first give God the glory. Hallelujah. You saw what Pastor Missy always kept insisting. Thank Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's very, very important. It will always, that's also a sign when a person will be that person to whom to, who is ministered to, Jehoshaphat was ministered. But Jehoshaphat ended up, although he did not prophesy, he ended up being, uh, he was able to spiritually lead himself and his people to spiritual victory. But God used the gift of somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody is important here. Everybody is important. Each one will have a role. Each one will have a gift. Each one will operate differently. Amen. But yes, it is the will of the Lord for all of us to operate at some level. Amen. Hallelujah. To the fullest level that God wants you to operate in. Amen. Praise God. Jehoshaphat was able to lead himself and the people to spiritual victory. That's what will happen when, what happens when you begin to function at this level. You will see victory in your life. You will be seeing victory in other people's lives. You become a spiritual leader. You become a spiritual influencer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give glory to God and thank and praise him right now and worship him and close this morning time. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We, we give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. For what you're speaking to us and teaching us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the manna from heaven. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. We pray that we will begin to, Lord, see and hear, Lord, things that we have not seen and heard. Hallelujah.
just as the people lord were in the synagogue and when you came into the synagogue and you said this oh is fulfilled in your hearing hallelujah they saw and heard and they saw the fulfillment hallelujah help us lord through these times that we will see lord and hear every time we come together in the house of god we want to commit ourselves to be more regular we want to be committing ourselves to be more disciplined hallelujah thank you jesus help us lord to be found in your presence in the vicinity of the presence of god where you are revealing yourself and manifesting your mighty works and your word hallelujah help us to be there every sunday every prayer meeting hallelujah help us oh god we pray that you will take us higher hallelujah thank you jesus we don't want to go with our agenda we don't want to see something of what we want to see happen but we want to hear your voice we want to see your face hallelujah as on the mount of transfiguration and as jehoshaphat lord hallelujah oh lord was able to spiritually lead himself and others to spiritual victory because of the operation of the gift of prophecy hallelujah we pray that such things will happen and we will see victory hallelujah victory in our lives victory lord in our homes victory in our family victory everywhere we go and victory for everyone lord and help us to bring victory in many people's lives hallelujah 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 bless your people lord bless your people abundantly we give you all the glory we